Hi everyone, Jordan from EdTech here. You may have noticed that we've been spending a little bit of time going over the important elements of successful pixel tape installations. We've run through a number of different scenarios to help us cover topics like voltage drop, power injection, wiring, and most recently we've gone through the ins and outs of power supplies. Today, we're going to be covering an important topic to keep in mind when creating any pixel tape installation, and that is safety. Before we go any further, we'd like to give a shout out to Facebook commenter Ben Spook for bringing us today's topic. When dealing with pixel tape installations, you'll most likely be working with 5 volts, 12 volts, and 24 volts. Occasionally, you might work with 48 volts for some larger projects like pixels being installed onto building facades. Depending on where you are in the world, you'll be subject to different standards. But in general, voltages less than 50 volts DC are classified as SELV, which stands for Safety Extra Low Voltage, and it tends to be considered low risk. Despite being considered low risk by technical definitions, there are still some hazards that you'll need to manage when setting up your pixel installation. In a previous episode, we've covered the idea of using fewer, larger power supplies because it's generally a cheaper option to go with and you need to make less mains connections. There is a significant hazard that can present itself to you when you have one larger power supply providing power injections for a number of smaller pixel sections. Let's consider an example where we have a Pixelator Mini fully loaded with 5 volt pixel tape. Let's also assume that we have the sections of tape close together so that the grid is dense enough to create a simple video screen. With all the pixel strips located so close to one another, we could easily power this setup using fewer, larger power supplies instead of a separate power supply for each P-Link injector. If we want to take this example to an extreme, we could use a 1 kilowatt 5 volt power supply to power the whole system. Our 8 P60-5-B 5 volt tape needs dual power injections when working with lengths between 1.5 and 7 meters. Keeping this in mind, here is how our powered system would look. When we connect a system up like this, we might be saving money on power supplies, but if there's an electrical fault that causes a short circuit in the pixel tape, this could lead to a serious fire hazard. Under normal operation, the control chips built into each pixel will adjust the amount of power going into the LED based on whether it needs to dim up or down as required by the show. However, if there's a short circuit in one of these LEDs, there is now an unrestricted path for current to flow through. A fault like this means the entire capacity of the power supply can now flow through the short circuit. In our scenario today, this means we could have up to a kilowatt of power flowing through our short. This section of tape can now heat up quite quickly due to the intense amount of current flowing through it. This could lead to our tape melting or worse, catching fire. One way to make the system safer while keeping the same power supply arrangement is to use fuses. Here's how this arrangement would look once it's fused. Fuses are designed to break once a certain amount of current has passed through them. This allows you to protect circuits from consuming dangerous amounts of current in the case of a fault. If you use fuses in your power injection lines, you can ensure that when an excess current flows toward the LED tape, like in the case of a short circuit, the fuse will break and cut the flow of current saving the controller and the rest of the circuitry. If you do decide to use fuses in your installation, it's important to size them appropriately so you properly protect your system. If your fuse is too big, you could let too much current through your system before it needs to break safely, and this could result in you damaging your system. If your fuse is too small, your fuse could break under normal operating conditions. Your fuse needs to be sized to meet the maximum power requirements of your LED tape. In this system, we're using the 8P60-5-B. Looking through its data sheet, we can see that the max power consumption of this tape is 11.5 watts per meter. So for each five meter section that we're powering, we would need to provide up to 57.5 watts. For five volt tape, this means a max current output of 11.5 amps. So our fuses should be rated to this current. Now, it might be difficult to find a fuse that is rated to exactly 11.5 amps, so we'll have to round to the nearest available fuse. If we were to round down to 11 amps, we would ensure that we would not damage the system, but it also means that the tape running on max output would cause the fuse to break. 
In this case, it would make much more sense to round up slightly to 12 amps so that the circuit is protected in the case of a short circuit fault, but the fuse isn't so small that it would burst during normal use. Using fuses in your installation might require a little bit more wiring, but ultimately you'll have a safer and more reliable outcome. Well, that's it for today's video. Like, share and subscribe if you found this video useful. Comment down below if you have any questions or you think there's something that we missed. Don't forget to check out our social media pages and stay tuned for more helpful and tech tips.